What is up most distinguished patrons of this channel? So I got a little bit of a treat for you. We are going to experiment and talk about a uncommon welding rod and that is the 8010. So let's get into it. So most of you out there are probably pretty familiar with man's best friend. No, that's not the dog in your living room, but 6010 5P Plus, or basically 6010 rods. It's a very well-known rod, and I tend to use it a lot for scabby material and stuff I don't really care that much about strength or poor fit-up. And, well, now that I weld pipe for a living, I use it for root pass on a lot of pipe. Works great for that. Well, what a lot of you guys might not be aware of or understand much about is that 6010 is just one of many rods that are in the 10 categories. So your cellulose-based rods, you have 6010, 7010, 8010. There might be a 9010. I'm not too sure on that, but I've never used it. But what I have used and what I have here to do a video on is what's known as 8010. This particular rod, which is known as the Pipeliner, it's known as a downhill rod because universally it's run downhill for both root pass and fill passes. But 8010 is a specialty cellulose-based rod that's typically only used in piping. Now, I've gotten questions in the past on whether or not you could use, say, 7010 or 8010 and match the strength of 7018 with a cellulose-based rod. And while the truth is, Yes, in tensile strength, this particular rod 8010 will meet or exceed 7018. However, that's just one aspect of a welding rod in a weld deposit. And truth be told, these rods, these cellulose-based rods, they have a lot of pluses like great penetration, very easy to run uphill and downhill compared to uh, 7018, and also very easy to fill gaps. Now, with that said, one of their weak points is, unfortunately, the welds they deposit tend to be fairly brittle. They don't take shock very well, and they tend to crack, versus 7018 will be, I guess the best way I could describe, more pliable. It will stretch and move with what you weld together, more so than be brittle and crack and snap. Now, this is going to be a great video to demonstrate something else that I've demonstrated in the past. And by the way, link on a video that I'm talking about in the description dealing with welding with 11018. But there's something to be said with over welding a material. Now, normal mild steel like we have in front of us, which is A36 hot rolled is what this is. When you weld it with 7018 or ER70 wire, be it MIG or TIG, you produce the strongest weld you're going to get from a standpoint of matching the base material. When you over weld it, say like use 11018 or some other high strength alloy filler, what ends up happening as you bend and stress this material, the weld doesn't move. It stays like the same size. It doesn't stretch and it creates failures that you wouldn't normally see. And that's why I tell people that universally, if you're welding mild steel U7018 or ER70, don't go with stronger fillers thinking you have a stronger weld. Because yes, the weld is stronger, but now you're going to force failures where it's going to break at the toe line or the material is going to tear through rather than everything moving and staying together. So anyways, with that said, we're going to do a couple comparisons. So I have 6010 here and I have 8010, which by the way, if you want to use this stuff, the unfortunate truth is you either have to buy 30 pounds of it, so like three tubes like this, or you have to buy a 50 pound tin. There is no way to buy this stuff in a smaller amount unless you do like what I did and buy a tin off of eBay. Uh, it's very difficult to get this stuff because it is a specialty rod. It is meant to be used on pipelines. So to start the testing, I'm going to run one pass with 6010 and one pass with 8010, and then we're going to cut and etch it and see what the penetration is. My guess is 8010 has less penetration than 6010. That's based off of welding open root with it. It's far harder to chew through bevels with 8010 than it is 6010. The best way I can describe this stuff, and someone told me once that they weld identical. Well, whoever that was was lying to me because they do not weld identical. 8010 has a weird property where like the weld 
the molten metal just clings to bevels. Like you can throw it in there and it just sticks. 6010 just blows holes through things. So without a doubt, it's an easier rod to run open root, but I think it's gonna have less penetration. So let's start. So this top one was 6010 5P plus, this bottom one was 8010 8P plus. 8 must mean better, right? Now the weird thing is both of these welds look very similar. However, when running them, they don't run anything like one another in my opinion. The 6010 is super aggressive, it's almost like a fire breathing dragon. The 8010 is a softer arc, it doesn't seem to me like it has as much spatter. The puddle is nice and liquid, but it's not like crisp, it's not harsh, and I didn't change the arc force or dig settings for either one of these, I ran them at 30%, so pretty low. And the welds look similar, but they just don't run similar. It'll be interesting, I'm going to cut this in half and look at the penetration. Based on how they ran, I would expect the 8P to uh, have less penetration, but you don't know. Sometimes you can be surprised on that. Now over here is a single pass of 8010. I'm going to put this in a shop press and bend test it. Now I don't anticipate that this is going to do what I would consider a pass. So your 7018, your ER70, TIG and MIG, dual shield, I mean all those have no problem fully bending this 3 8 plate and not having a failure of the weld. I have a feeling that this weld is basically going to be so hard and it's not going to be ductile and it's going to end up not stretching and this plate's going to just tear right here at the toe line just like 6010. And speaking of brittleness, uh, since a lot of you will never probably use this stuff, don't tack with this rod, especially over 6010 unless you're running this. Like if you got a bunch of this for free, the tack welds on this is about as, they're as brittle as glass, I'll put it to you that way. I've never seen tack welds so brittle. And depending on what type of pipe you're using this on, uh, you can have whole welds crack if you're not careful for like if you have one or two inch tack welds on bigger pipe like you got to be very careful with this stuff brittle as brittle can be all right well let's go and uh, I'm going to cut and etch and I'll be right back all right well I got the cut and etch done so let's take a look at that so the penetration between the two of them is actually very similar, a lot closer than I would have thought going into this. The 6010 is on the right, the 8010 is on the left. The 6010 does have a little bit deeper at the maximum depth of the penetration, and the profile is kind of more triangular shaped versus rounder with the 8010 on the left. But for all practical purposes, these are very close to one another, and you could easily confuse both of them as being 6010. When you look at other rods that are out there like 7018, 6013, those have an unmistakably different welding profile for the penetration. So these definitely are closer than I would have thought based on how they run. Well, this weld is about as defect-free as you're going to get on something like this. And it definitely was not meant to be doing structural steel in a flat position. But hey, be interesting to see what happens. Like I said, I think this thing is going to fail just like 6010 before the plates fully bend. Here we go. Squint hard. And I suspected failure. Well, this weld failed exactly like 6010 did, and it's not too surprising. What I think is going on is, as this plate starts to stretch and it tugs on this toe line here of this weld, this weld is very hard, doesn't have much ductility, it doesn't stretch, and it more or less forces all of that stress right here at the toe line because this material is stretching and pulling this is not 
And if the weld was more pliable per se, uh, the force would get stretched out over the width of the weld, not just right here at the tow line, and it would likely not fail. Case in point, here's a pretty scabby 7018 weld, and this had no problem surviving this. Now, the top tow line does uh, have some cracking that's starting to appear, but for all practical purposes, it still hasn't let go. And when you look at how much this is bent over and it's not failed, you can see how much less it actually bent before it failed. So this really didn't take much force before that tow line failed. Looking at the penetration here, the original edge is all broken down. We don't see a straight edge like the top there, so that's all good. No porosity internal in the weld, so that's also very good. I think it's just the lack of ductility and the overall performance outside of the tensile strength that kind of put this at a disadvantage in this test over a lot of other 7018 and similar rods as, as well as uh, MIG and TIG welding. So for all of you out there, the performance of this really isn't going to be any better than 6010, so it's not worth buying a bunch of this thinking that you're getting something that you're not. For a majority of what you guys would weld, there's really no advantage to this over 6010, other than you're going to pay a lot more for the cost of this and it's harder to get. Now you're probably wondering, or at least asking yourself, well what is this commonly used for? I told you it's used for pipe. Well, I'll give you some info on that. So I use 8010 more than probably most people that weld pipe in my area simply because it's used for a very specific purpose. The company I work for has welding procedure for a specific grade of pipe that's used in super low temps. So think like negative 17 or negative 15 in colder piping. That's kind of an unusual circumstance. And that piping, which I guess is heat treated steel, it's a specific grade of carbon pipe, that stuff Per welding code specifies that 8010 be used for the root pass and in many cases for a fill pass and then to be capped with 7018. 6010 is not to be used and it's not really the weaker strength of it. It has to do apparently with the lower temp performance. With 8010, it apparently meets whatever criteria is needed, meets the welding procedure, therefore that's what they weld by and they abide by, therefore 8010 is used. Now in my experience, this stuff does not weld like 6010. It tends to cling to the bevels of the pipe really easy. I find it far easier to run downhill than 6010. I have ran it uphill and it works, but it has a real weird tendency to get a lack of fusion in ways that you never see with 6010, which is kind of why I'm surprised that the cut and etch of the penetration is so similar because welding with it, it welds like it's less aggressive. So I would have thought it'd have less penetration. The other thing that's kind of interesting with this stuff running it is that it seems to me like it wants more amperage. I tend to run this stuff around 80 to 90 amps routinely. I find that if I were to try and run a 6010 at 90 on a lot of pipe, you would just blow a hole in the bevel. It's kind of like it sucks amperage up more. Why it is, I don't know, but it is easy to run. I don't mind the way it runs, but I'm sure as hell not using this as a substitute for 6010, nor should you probably. You're not really gonna gain anything. So with that said, if you got any comments, questions, thoughts on this, feel free to leave them. Otherwise, until next time.